what happened as A was changing? So what are some things that you observed that were happening as A was changing? It was flipping on the x-axis. Okay, so it was reflecting over the x-axis. That is a correct statement. So if you don't have that written down, I want to make sure you write that down. So it reflected over the x-axis. When did that occur? When did it reflect over the x-axis? Okay, it reflected whenever A was less than zero. That's what we would consider as a reflection. Whenever A went negative, and that makes sense. Think about quadratics. Whenever A was negative, the parabola opened which way? Down. Down. It reflected over the x-axis. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to know about A. That's the first thing that A does to the graph. Okay, what else happened with A when A was changing? What else was happening to your graph? The size of it did what? You're not necessarily wrong. So the other thing that A does to the graph is that A either stretches or compresses. Hold on, let me specify. It's either a vertical stretch Or, I didn't spell that right, did I? Okay. There we go. It's either a vertical stretch or a vertical compression. Nope, I'm a math teacher. That's why I can't spell. Hmm. Yeah, I hate writing. So it's either a vertical stretch or a vertical compression. When did the graph, like think about the word stretch. Stretch means to make something taller. If we're thinking vertically, we're doing something taller. So um, when did it get taller? What was happening to A? It was, it was getting larger. So what we're going to say is that it vertically stretched when the absolute value of A was greater than 1. We're going to say it vertically stretched when the absolute value of A is greater than 1. Because we're going to be a little specific here. Um, what does absolute value mean? Let's just ref refresh that concept. Like, what's the absolute value of negative 7? Seven? Seven. 7. What's the absolute value of positive 12? 12. What's the absolute value of negative 362? Negative 362. No, 360. It is 362. The actual definition, like 100% like true, like if you were to Google definition of absolute value, it's the distance from 0 on the number line. And think about, like, in physics, you learn the distance is always what? It's always positive. Distance is always positive. You cannot go a negative distance. You can have a negative velocity because you can have a negative direction. You cannot have a negative distance. That's the same idea when Ferris Bueller thought that he could, like, run the car in reverse and then he could go back down on the odometer. Have you ever seen Ferris Bueller? He tried that. It didn't work very well for him. He quickly learned that. And in fact, added more miles to the car than he already had on there. Oh. So you cannot go a negative distance. Okay. Um, so it vertically stretches if the absolute value of A is greater than 1. And it vertically compresses if A is between, the absolute value of A is between 0 and 1. So things like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 1 half, 3 fourths. 0.99, these are all going to be vertical compressions. So that's when it vertically compresses. All right. What happened for the next one? Let me look to the right. It was horizontally. Stuff was moving around. So, um... We could either horizontally stretch or compress. So there was horizontal stretches and horizontal compressions that were occurring.
Yes, it is getting wider. That's a horizontal stretch. When is it getting wider? What was happening to the value in order for it to get wider? It was, do what? Was it increasing or decreasing? decreasing? If it was decreasing. So this is the opposite of vertical. And we're going to learn that horizontal is always the opposite of vertical. I mean, that makes sense. Like horizontal and vertical are opposites. But even so, like more specifically, all of their attributes for the uh, transformations are always the opposite of what we think they should be. So horizontal stretches occur when the absolute value of B is between 0 and 1. So if 0 is less than the absolute value of B, which is less than 1, that is a horizontal stretch. And horizontal compressions occur when the absolute value of B is greater than 1. So again, these are the opposite of vertical. I think the last two are pretty easy. Mm -hmm. That's literally what happened. So let's start with the third one. So for this one, we're talking about C. Where is C located, by the way? It's inside the parentheses. That is important. It is inside the parentheses. What happened? Oh, we need to go back. Sorry. It, we need to add something. What else happened as you changed B? It reflected over the y-axis. I apologize. I forgot that one. That's important. So this reflects over the y-axis. When did it reflect over the y-axis? Yes. It reflected over the y-axis when it was negative. Or B was less than zero. Yes, ma'am. Whenever B was less than zero. Okay. Now back to C. What did C do? Is C changed? What did that do to the graph? So how would you say that using mathy words? It translated. Directionally, which way? Yes, left and right. We, we specify which directions. Wow. Okay, so this one's easy. It either translates left or shifts left. Does it matter like when like it changes the directions? Like, did, like it was like what, negative 10 and then positive 10? Like, it's, like bounce between? Um, we're comparing everything to zero. So depending on whether it's greater than zero, where was it compared to the other graph that was already there? Was it on the left side of that graph or the right side of that graph? Okay, so we are either shifting left or shifting right. Now, this one gets a little bit, I'm shifting it left. What that's going to look like in the written problem is it's going to be a plus C. And if I'm shifting it to the right, what that's going to look like in the problem is actually a minus C. Okay, the last part's easy. What did D do to the graph? It moved the graph up and down. Change the y-intercept, change the y-axis. So when did it shift up? When it was positive. And when did it shift down? When it was negative. I know you're like, oh my gosh, this is awful. We are looking at page 66. Okay, we are looking at page 66. This is, this is where we're starting. This is where all of what we just talked about comes into play. Oh. It says, I have the absolute value of x plus 6. Okay, you are not going to fail. What is this plus 6 going to do to the graph? Is this where A, B, C, or D is located? Look, at, look back at the QR code page. C. Is it C or is it D? C. It's D. Why do you, how do you know it's D? It it's F outside. F okay. F so if I have plus 6, what's that going to do to the graph? It's going to how much? Uh, six. Okay. That's all you write. Wow. Okay. Okay. I might not feel like, this might be the first thing I've passed all year. Okay. That one package. All right. Then I have... 
for the next one, the graph of um, absolute value of x minus 4. So what's the minus 4 going to do to the graph? Okay. Yeah, Okay, where's your little tricks that like go in and make the whole process really complicated? What does that Give it a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's about There's no way I should Okay, B. Look at part B. So part B, look at those two values that you have. You have a minus 3 and a plus 5. Where are those located? They're inside. So is that A, B, C, or D? C. So that's a good question. Why aren't they using parentheses? What are they using now instead? Absolute. They're using absolute value of x. They're using a specific function instead of the generic f of x. But I want you to know it doesn't matter. It does not matter if it's f of x, absolute value of x, square root of x, x squared, the cube root of x, x to the third power, 1 over x something, or log the log of 1x, or sorry, the log of x minus something, or like exponents. We'll talk about it. But it doesn't matter what function it is that you're using. It depends on where it is. Is it inside the parentheses or the absolute value or the square root symbol or the parentheses with a square on the outside on the denominator? Where is it? It's inside. Then what is that minus 3 going to do to that graph? Move it to the right. Move it to the right. So it's going to translate it right or shift right four units. Sorry, right, three units. Thank you. Okay, what about the plus five and the absolute value of x plus five? What's that going to do? Okay. So it's going to shift left five. All right. Part C. Where are these numbers located? In front, was that A, B, C, or D? A. A. So what is the one-fourth going to do that's in front here? Is one-fourth less than one? No. It's going to vertically compress. One-fourth is less than one, so it's a vertical compression. It's between zero and one. That's what it should say. Okay, so it's a vertical compression. We're going to add something else to this of one-fourth. All right, what about the negative 3x? Okay, it's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of what? Hmm. Okay, let's talk about that. Vertical stretch... of 3. It is just a vertical stretch of 3. So if it's negative, it like, becomes positive? When you're talking about the, the scale factor, you don't worry about the negative. You just look at the number itself. What does that negative sign tell us happens to the graph? It reflects over the x-axis. So it's reflected over the x-axis. In portion D, I have the absolute value of 1 fourth X. Where is that at? Inside. So what letter is that? A, B, C, or D? B. So what is the 1 fourth going to do? Okay, it's going to be a horizontal stretch. Yes. Of, what's my scale factor? Horizontal stretch of 4 over 1. Where did that come from? It is the reciprocal, which is the reciprocal, okay? The reciprocal is your reciprocal. I did not make that up. I have a friend who's a math teacher, and he tells really bad dad jokes, and his dad jokes typically involve math. And so he's really good at coming up with stuff like that. So he, has, he says the word reciprocal is a reciprocal because it gives you a good visual image of what is happening to your fraction. Okay? 
It's not a real word. Okay. So what about the negative 4x here? Okay. What is this negative 4x going to do to the graph? Okay. So it's, it's going to be a verti or sorry, horizontal compression. of positive one-fourth. Okay, where did the one-fourth come from? It's the reciprocal again. Because anytime you don't have a fraction, what can you put in the denominator? One. A one. Then if you have four over one and you flip it, you get one over four. And then what else does the negative sign do there? When you talk about your scale factor, you don't worry about the negative sign. The negative sign tells you the reflection. The, when we talk about our scale factor, it's our absolute value of that number. And in this case, it's our reciprocal. Okay, look at the next page. Okay, we are looking at page 69. We have a function, g of x equals negative one-fifth times the absolute value of x plus six plus four. Okay, we are on page 69. All right, start with the negative sign, the negative one-fifth. What is that negative sign going to do to the graph? What is that negative sign going to do? It's gonna reflect it over the x-axis. Okay, what about the one-fifth? How do you know it's vertical and not horizontal? Okay, so where is the one-fifth located? Is it inside or outside the absolute value? Outside, so that means it's a vertical. Would this be a vertical stretch or compression? Think about the number one-fifth. It's a compression. It's a vertical compression of one fifth. Okay. What about my plus six? Where is that plus six located? Inside. Inside. So which way is that going to move the graph? To the left. It's going to translate it or shift it left. Six units. How do you know it shifted left? What told you that? Because it was positive. It's the opposite. And then the last thing was our plus four. What is the, where is that plus four at? Outside. Outside. So what's it going to do to the graph? It's going to shift it up four. Your homework is going to be due Thursday. That's not changing. Okay, it's due Thursday. All I want you to do for right now, so you, I would highly recommend you start on it. For 1 through 11, one through eleven, I want you to describe the transformations. Uh, it starts on page, what page am we on? 73. 73, okay. Yes, all we're doing for right now is what we just did on 1 through 11. Okay, it's not due till Thursday, but um, we are going to like start with this transformation, just describing it. Then we're going to come back and learn how we graph that. Okay, because we're going to be able to apply this knowledge and actually graph stuff.